great. Welcome back to Bold here at UST, where we talk to bold guests. Today, we have the honor uh, to have someone experienced, someone who's been here a long time ago, someone who not just, he, he wasn't just here a long time ago, but he's also out there representing UST running as a judge. And I would like to welcome in our show today, Mr. Michael Landrum. Welcome, Mr. Michael. Thank you, Alex. All and right. Hello, UST. All right. Wow, I don't even know where to start. I mean, I was already very excited to know that, you know, we're going to have someone like you because, you know, the thing that we have uh, is that we see, you know, you are our first guest who comes in, used to be here, and you're gone, and you have, you, you have had such a good experience, and now you're running as a judge, and we really think this is going to inspire, inspire people. And I would like to start with you and say, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. Of course, we want to start with, you know, of course, knowing where you're from, uh, um, uh, your family, and of course, your experience here at USD. You bet, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, well, I am a native Houstonian. I grew up here in Houston. Mm -hmm. I graduated from Memorial High School, mm -hmm. and from there, then I came here to UST, mm -hmm. where I got my Bachelor of Arts degree in, uh, excuse me, 1973. Right. It's hard to believe that <laughs> it's been right. that many years. <laughs> <All right. laughs> um, after, after getting my BA here, then I went to Austin to the University of Texas Law School. Mm -hmm. And uh, during my law school uh, time, I was also employed by the Texas State Senate. All right. Um, wow. After completing, after receiving my uh, JD or Juris Doctor mm -hmm. degree from the law school, mm -hmm. uh, then I moved to Houston to practice law. And I was a lawyer here for many years. Mm -hmm. uh, before 2013, when mm -hmm. Governor Rick Perry mm -hmm. appointed me to be a judge. Wow. And uh, wow. I served in that position until January the 1st, 2018, wow. so just here about uh, eight months ago. Mm -hmm. And wow. Uh, wow. so now I'm back in the practice of law. Wow, wow. This, this, <laughs> this is a great experience. I mean, so many years of experience. And, and like I said, we are proud that you came from UST. I mean, you, you know, we have to have someone out there who's representing UST. You know, and, uh, and, and, and tell, us, tell us about your, your family, you know, sure. know, your wife. and you know. Okay, well, um, you have had the uh, pleasure of meeting my wife, exactly. Mary Grace. Yes. Uh, she's a wonderful, wonderful woman. Mm -hmm. um, she did not go to UST, but right. she did go mm -hmm. to, um, uh, to a Catholic university in Steubenville, Ohio. Ohio, Ohio yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, at the time, it was called the University of Steubenville, and today it's called Franciscan University. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. We met uh, in Austin, and uh, we have been married now just a little over 36 years. Wow. We have wow. a son named Matthew who is uh, in his 30s, and he lives in Tyler, Texas. Mm -hmm. um, for myself, when I was growing up here in Houston, my father was the superintendent of the Spring Branch Independent School District. Oh, right. So... Uh, I have teachers all over my background. Mm -hmm. Wow, wow, this is amazing. Now, tell us about your experience here at USD. What, what was USD like during your time, a well, long time ago? It, it, it was a, a small university, and I guess by today's standards, it still is. Mm -hmm. uh, the student body is larger now than it was. Mm -hmm. But one thing I thought was wonderful about my years at UST is the very many opportunities, um, both educational and cultural, that mm -hmm. it offered me. Mm -hmm. Um, and I regret, frankly, that I did not take advantage of more wow. of the opportunities <laughs> that were available here at UST back then. Mm -hmm. um, but it really made me into a fuller human being. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think one of the main reasons for that was that uh, we had a requirement then, and I think you still do, mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. uh, every student take philosophy and theology exactly. courses. Exactly. That's true. Uh, mm -hmm. Of course, as a, a freshman, I hated that and I didn't want to <laughs> do it. Uh, but I realize now that it made me a, a fuller person. Exactly. It, it gave me an appreciation of life and, and uh, my fellow human beings that I would not have gotten exactly. had I just gone to another university and gone through academics. Mm -hmm. Wow, wow. And, and, this is, and we're talking about in the 70s, right? The 70s. That's right. It was, I started here in 1970, mm -hmm. um, in, uh, in September of 1970, and I graduated in May of 1973. May. Wow, wow. Yeah, and, and 
the activities, I know you say you, you didn't take part in a lot of opportunities. So what, what type of activities did you say you were involved in? Like, you well, know, I, did, I, I did my best. <laughs> uh, well, the university did not have any uh, organized sports teams at the time. Oh, okay. 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 Um, but we did have a, a film department. Uh -huh. And so I, uh, I had took some film classes. And wow. I also worked part-time for the university as the assistant for, to, the, to the film department. Wow. Wow. Um, I spent a lot of time uh, with the drama department. Wow. Uh, even though I wasn't a drama major, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. they were kind enough to let me come in and, yeah. and act in some of the plays and be part of their community as well. Mm -hmm. um, and then, as I say, there were many more opportunities mm -hmm. that were available on campus, mm -hmm. and I would do a little bit of involvement in some of those things, but really not enough to become fully in, incorporated into those you know, organizations Organization, and such yeah. as that. Yeah. So, so how is it how can you explain, try to explain to us how your experience here shaped your life going outside? I know you talked about the theology and the, and the philosophy that you took and you saw how it helped you. But overall experience, how did that really help you and prepare you for the outside? Well, well you know, in, in mentioning that the, the university is having some struggles with non-core curriculum, mm -hmm. I believe in the old-fashioned liberal arts college, mm -hmm. which is what the UST was for me back in those days. Wow. Um, it afforded, the doors were open, it afforded me an opportunity to learn about life and human beings in a way that I think a lot of today's young people don't get that chance. Wow. Um, one of my th favorite courses was a course in Shakespeare. Mm -hmm. It was taught wow. by wow. Charles Crone, who is a famous actor here mm -hmm. in Houston, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and I just used to love his course. Wow. Um, but there again, that had nothing to do with, with uh, a major. It didn't do anything for my legal education except mm -hmm. for the fact that, um, and I'll, I'll tell you what a, one of my law professors said. Mm -hmm. um, he, he told the class, and this was a, on one of my first days in law school, mm -hmm. he told the class, do not confuse the law with life. Wow. If you want to learn the law, read the law, but if you want to learn about life, read Shakespeare. <laughs> wow. And wow. I agree with that. Wow. <laughs> wow. Wow, that's it's something I need to remember too. That's <laughs> really important. And what were your best moments? What, what can you say? Do, do you? I know it's been a long time, but you know, can you remember some of your best times here at, at USD that you you spent? Probably my best times were spending time with the other students in okay. in various activities. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, of course, there was a small group that involved were involved with the the department of the film and media department, and mm -hmm. so I knew I was close with them. And mm -hmm. then. The, the drama students, were we were also a close bunch because, mm -hmm. you know, you do all of that outside of class. Mm -hmm. And so uh, <laughs> we spent time together yeah. in, in the mm -hmm. evenings and on weekends. Mm -hmm. um, but really, uh, I went through school pretty fast. Wow. So I didn't wow. have a lot of leftover time. Mm -hmm. I got my degree in three years mm -hmm. and had a part-time job the whole time mm -hmm. and actually took one semester off to go travel. Wow. So, uh, <laughs> so I was carrying some pretty heavy class uh -huh. loads. Uh, uh -huh. So there wasn't a whole lot of downtime. <laughs> wow, wow. So, is one thing that I see here with students is is that you know me coming back to school because I'm coming back for my second uh, bachelor's degree and I'm and I am a major in theology. Is one thing I'm I'm seeing. You know, I am coming back as you ex as as you just explained now is that you look at theology and philosophy as a life experience, and I've experienced that in church and, you know, teaching and, and hearing, you know, talking about theology, and I see it as a way of life. Now, in during your time, and I know that you talked about, you know, you were, uh, you, you didn't have much downtime, but was it more of a, uh, was it a problem for you coming in here and looking at it as, I'm just going to school to get a degree, or was it a thing, was it a thing where it's like, I, you know, I'm trying to get life experience something you know well of course i started out mm -hmm. coming to school just to get a degree, just a degree. Yeah, right. okay <laughs> right. um i will confess i was very immature at that time and uh -huh. so i was just going to school to get the degree and get mm -hmm. done i was a young man in a hurry but i had no idea where i was headed mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. as i grew and as i went through my education mm -hmm. uh, i learned a lot more about myself mm -hmm. and i learned where i was was yeah, headed uh, but to be quite honest with you, it wasn't until much later in life yeah. where I discovered what I was really meant to do. Wow, wow. 
Yeah, yeah. I mean, this is this is so deep, and I and I always like to ask that question because when I see students out here and the student loans, you know, oh. and all these different things, and I'm looking at life, and I'm like, wow, you see them getting ready to go out, and you don't know, is it just a degree? Is it? A, 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 am I really trying to look for experience in life? And 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 that is so so sad sometimes when you see what's going on. I agree with you, Alex. I you know, and I regret so much that that. Uh, uh, higher education is so so expensive, expensive these days. Yes, yes. Um, it it really pushes people to have a much less open l mind about their education. Mm -hmm. Because one thing I've learned uh, all over uh, you know my entire life mm -hmm. is that there is no such thing as useless information. Exactly. Exactly. Um, and a time in a college or a university is a time when a, a young person should have the luxury. Mm -hmm of being open to learning to at learning. every turn, yeah. every day of yes. the uh, year, exactly. because it's there for you. And that's yeah. when I, that's kind of brings me back to, I wish I had taken better advantage, advantage. of the opportunities that were yes. available to me at UST, yeah. because I, I had a lot to learn. Wow. And uh, if this I had done, a, done a better job of teaching myself and, and mm -hmm. soaking in mm -hmm. uh, the learning that was available, maybe I wouldn't have made some turns in my life that I, I wish I could redo. Wow, wow. I wanted to now talk about your career, you know, because this is where a lot of students will definitely be interesting in, because, you know, you talked about that great experience that you had at USD, and we, we're always happy to hear all that good, good stuff about our school. Now, you finish at USD, you went out there. So one of my first things is, what have been some of the defining moments of your career, and why do you view them as so? Oh, goodness gracious, Alex. That's a, that's a really mm -hmm. big question, <laughs> and uh, it's, it's a short question to ask, but it's a large question Mark. to answer. <laughs> uh -huh. um, defining moments. Mm -hmm. Well, I think that every person who goes into the legal profession mm -hmm. has got to make some decisions about who they are and what kind of an attorney they will be. Mm -hmm. And by that, I don't mean what kind of cases will they handle, mm -hmm. but how will they relate to the uh, clients that they have mm -hmm. and to the judicial system, you know, our system of the rule of law and the laws by which we all must govern ourselves. Mm -hmm. um, it's really, for me, a matter of respect. Right. It's a matter of respect for our forebears, for the, the framers of our Constitution, mm -hmm. the many, many women and men who have passed our laws and have served as judges to interpret and apply those laws, mm -hmm. to the people who serve as jurors in our court. Mm -hmm. Most people don't think about jury service as a way to serve our, our society, mm -hmm. uh, but it is in fact exactly what that is. So many people will tell me, oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get out of jury service, mm -hmm. and my response is always, why? <laughs> you know, come, please, sit in the jury. Hope you, you're selected to be in, on a jury because you are contributing in a very, very important and basic way mm -hmm. to what our society is. Mm -hmm. um, for me, one of the big questions that has followed me throughout my career is just what is it that we want to do with our laws and our legal system? Mm -hmm. um, and uh, part of one of the things that I've done in my career mm -hmm. um, and please don't hold it against me, but I taught a <laughs> class out at uh, Houston Baptist University mm -hmm. about our courts mm -hmm. and our judicial s system. And the mm -hmm. one of the first things I start the, the course out with is mm -hmm. I ask the class to tell me what does justice mean? Wow. That's an easy question to answer and a harder question, I mean an easy question to ask, mm -hmm. but a hard right. question to answer sometimes. Mm -hmm. um, but it is a fundamental issue that I think is very important. Uh, so the defining moments, to get back to your question in, mm -hmm. in my life, were the, the, the times that I have had to confront that. Mm -hmm. um, when, say, a client asks you to take a position that you know is wrong and, mm -hmm. and to, to, to have the courage to tell the client the client is wrong, mm -hmm. um, to stand before a court and to tell the court what the weaknesses of your position are, mm -hmm. um, th those too are, are tests of character. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, we also, as lawyers, often work for free mm -hmm. uh, because there are people with needs yeah. and uh, those are p often people without means mm -hmm. to pay an attorney and so I think it's part of the practice of law mm -hmm. to, to give back in that way. Mm -hmm. um, I've enjoyed uh, 
many things and I have not enjoyed many things uh, mm -hmm. just simply because anytime you're dealing with people mm -hmm. under stress mm -hmm. in in trying situations it 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 knocks you up it, mm -hmm. it, it, it causes you to to, to uh, have concern for them mm -hmm. you really want a, a great outcome for them exactly. and very often they've made terrible mistakes wow. Wow. And, and, and I wanted to ask you, what is your focus in, in, in law? What, what do well, you at, at the present mm -hmm. time, my mm -hmm. focus is I represent mostly business people mm -hmm. and businesses mm -hmm. in all kinds of, of d law, from Lost. real okay. estate and mm -hmm. contracts and uh, even some probate when people pass away or do wills and things like that. So it's a general civil practice. Mm -hmm. I really, mm -hmm. uh, in my career, have not done a whole lot of criminal representation. Mm -hmm. At one time, I did some divorces in family law matters, and mm -hmm. I don't do that anymore. Mm -hmm. And even when you became judge, you stayed in the civil. That's civil correct. Court. Yeah, okay. when I was a, served as a judge, mm -hmm. it was all almost all civil cases. Now there were times when other judges um, didn't have enough time to reach all of their cases, and mm -hmm. I would take over some family <coughs> cases and some child custody cases and mm -hmm. uh, uh, child protective cases. Mm -hmm. um, and that really was an enriching mm -hmm. part of mm -hmm. serving as a judge. I got to, to learn something new mm -hmm. wow. and see and see the law and the life and life from a different viewpoint. Wow. Wow. Yeah. And, and I, I wanted to ask you, <coughs> how does a governor uh, like our governor, uh, Mr. Rick Perry, how does he go to select someone like you? What, what attracts him? Because uh, I know you come, <laughs> you come out of <laughs> you, you, you're a lawyer like many other lawyers right. are out there. So what is the thing, I mean, with your experience, how, how do we connect that? You know, the governor comes out and just pick out, is that just a, no, a lottery? No, or what? It, it, it's not a lottery. It doesn't <laughs> exactly. happen by chance. And, uh -huh. and you know, that, that becomes a, a dilemma because mm -hmm. that is a political process. Okay. Okay. Um, as we discussed, our, our judges in Texas are elected judges, mm -hmm. and that is a political process, mm -hmm. but one that, that is not intensely political, if you can un mm -hmm. understand what I mean. Mm -hmm. Um, the, when the governor, the governor only appoints judges when there is a vacancy mm -hmm. that occurs uh, in between elections. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In my case, uh, one of the judges uh, on our courts had been elected to a different court, mm -hmm. and so that created a vacancy, a vacancy. Mm -hmm. in that court, mm -hmm. and Governor Perry then appointed me to fill that vacancy until the next election. Mm -hmm. and the next election I ran, and mm -hmm. I won mm -hmm. that election, and then I went on and served. Mm -hmm. Um, how does the governor make that choice? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, people who want to be appointed apply, oh, okay. and the governor's office has a long, long application and requires many things to be submitted. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and then he, he and his office, he has a staff that does it, mm -hmm. evaluates the candidates, and, mm -hmm. and he makes his pick from there. Ah, okay, okay. Well, I mean, this is great information to know, you know, the... the the process because you know you, people will always ask this question and and <clears throat> what drives your work how can I say <laughs> what exactly drive yeah and you mean as a judge as or a, as, as it, 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 uh, the overall thing far as you know the lawyer and of okay. course and of course as a, well, a judge let me let me reflect more mm -hmm. on on my work as a judge uh -huh. just simply because that frankly is the most prominent <clears throat> part of my career mm -hmm. um, it is serving as a judge was the one time that I felt like I was where the good Lord meant me to be. All right, <laughs> and I never thought I would feel that. Mm -hmm. It was it, it, it just a wonderful feeling to feel like mm -hmm. this is what I'm meant to do. Mm -hmm. um, and what drives that is it goes back to that same word that I said before: mm -hmm. respect. Mm -hmm. Respect for the system. Respect mm -hmm. for the law. Respect for the attorneys and the people who are there before the court and mm -hmm. the jurors who come to assist. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, it, it's a simple thing to say, um, but there are many, uh, many rules to follow and, and laws that, that become involved. But at the end of the day, if someone fully respects what they're there to do, mm -hmm. they'll do a fine job. All right, all right. Now, I wanted to ask you this. So, is, I'm, I'm not so sure about uh, Texas, but the is, is it every case is, as a judge mm -hmm. that has a jury? Uh, is this some of the cases that you probably, as a judge, right. have to take some decisions? Yeah, uh, of course. Mm -hmm. Judges make 
hundreds of decisions a year, mm -hmm. maybe thousands. Mm -hmm. um, and not all cases that are filed will go through to the yeah. final trial. Mm -hmm. Whether or not a case goes to trial before a jury is the choice of the people in the case. Mm -hmm. Either side can request that their trial be by jury. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they decide they'd rather just have the judge decide the things that a jury would decide. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but one thing is for certain, um, and this is why I tell people, please, please respond to your jury summonses. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Every case that comes into a court is the most important case there is to the people involved. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's another point of respect. Mm -hmm. It's easy to say, well, this case is just about a little bit of money or a small piece of property or something like that. Mm -hmm. But to the people involved, that's all there is. That's true. It's the most important thing in their lives when they come in. And so um, respect must be shown. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> one of the reasons why I was asking you that, so many things I, I would love to ask you. And one of the reason, reason why I was asking you that is, uh, I w I'm, I'm trying to see if there were a, a time where you had a case where you made a decision as a judge and you probably regretted that decision. You know? And, and, and I, I'm talking about that because I, I, I kind of want to also ask you to talk about how your faith did help you, you know, as a judge. You know, sure. Most, most importantly, yeah. Well, without getting too deep into mm -hmm. the specifics of mm -hmm. any given case, first mm -hmm. let me say this. Mm -hmm. Every judge who has respect for our laws and our mm -hmm. system mm -hmm. is required to make decisions that they may not agree with mm -hmm. all the time, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. um, I had several cases come before my court from various groups involving religious questions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, as you probably know, um, our Constitution says that church and state need to be separated, mm -hmm. and there are a very limited types of cases that a court will consider mm -hmm. involving religious organizations. Uh, it's very well established that courts will not become involved in matters of doctrine mm -hmm. or membership in a congregation mm -hmm. or the management of the congregation. And so very often, as you yeah. probably know, congregations become divided over important doctrinal issues. Mm -hmm. The courts must abstain from taking on those matters. Mm -hmm. And so, yes, there were several cases where I wish I could have mm -hmm. uh, not been involved as a judge so much as maybe a mediator or a peacekeeper, mm -hmm. a peacemaker. Yeah. Um, but of course, a judge cannot do that either. Exactly. So I was required to abstain mm -hmm. and, um, you know, hope the people would, would, you know, would rely on their faith to work mm -hmm. out their differences. Yeah, yeah. And I know that you are you are knowing your your wonderful wife that you know you are a strong Catholic as well because um, I've seen you uh, both of you at, at at your parish at Saint Cecilia and the work that your wife is doing and and you know she wouldn't as a strong Catholic herself she wouldn't be doing all of that if she didn't have the support as somebody who's also spiritually you know very strong so that spirituality you know your own spirituality never had a conflict with your work. Do, do you think, can you say that, or do you think, you know, just as a person? And well, what you're doing? Not, a, not a conflict with my work. I mean, yes, it has from time to time required me to reject work, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. where I did not believe that the people I was, was asked to, to help out were, were dealing in good faith, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, just simply because I feel like I've got a duty to be able to respect myself mm -hmm, mm -hmm, um, as mm -hmm. well as respect others. That's and true. and mm -hmm. so many times uh, a person will ask an attorney to do something that, that is against that attorney's mm -hmm. convictions. Mm -hmm. And it's a difficult thing to do, mm -hmm. to say, wow. no, I'm afraid I just can't represent you. Mm -hmm. Let me help you find another attorney. Wow. Wow. And I've had to do that. Now we we're going to finish here, and I wanted to ask you. Now this is what you know. A lot of a lot of students will want to hear this. What are three or four tips you could give to students to help them trying to fulfill you know uh, in in work when they get out of here? <laughs> well, as I said earlier, the uh -huh. one thing is to make the best use of your time mm -hmm. in university. Mm -hmm. um, even though you may be a major in biology, mm -hmm. 
uh, don't pass up the opportunity to participate with other groups on campus mm -hmm. and to become involved in other things. Mm -hmm. Embrace Shakespeare. All right, all right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll take that. Um, <laughs> and and uh, even though it may be an inconvenience to you, mm -hmm. um, warm up to the philosophy and the theology yes. courses. Yes. Yes. You yes. may not, you may not feel like it's useful to you mm -hmm. right now. Mm -hmm. But I guarantee you there mm -hmm. will be a time in your life mm -hmm. when it will be. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Remember that your education is important, but so is your life outside. Yeah. Uh, don't stop being a member of your community, yeah. your faith community, mm -hmm. your civic community, mm -hmm. your family. Mm -hmm. um, so don't let study and just take you over. Yeah. 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 And as far as going forward in life, never, ever never ever stop learning mm -hmm. remain open mm -hmm. because there is so much that we can never learn mm -hmm. it all mm -hmm. um, people are just fascinating mm -hmm. and um, and so listen to that voice mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and let let that voice tell you mm -hmm. where you need to be what you need to be doing it may take a while. Mm -hmm. um, there's a school here in Houston that's named after my father. Mm -hmm. It's a middle school. And I had been a judge for a short time when they invited me to come and speak to the school. And as I was driving out there, I'm thinking to myself, now what am I going to tell these seventh and eighth grade students? Wow. <laughs> it occurred to me. I said to them, you know what? I, forget. I, I was in my 60s at the time. Mm -hmm. I was, mm -hmm. was just more than 60 years old, and I said to them, I finally figured out what I want to be when I grow up. <laughs> and they thought I would, they, <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> the message was, never decide what you want to be when you grow up. Exactly. Wow. <laughs> no, thank you very much, Mr. Landrum. We are very happy to uh, to see that we have someone like you who, who came from USD and now you, you are doing big things. Thank you very much for having you. And we are hoping that we we'll have you again because you're working, you're running for judge. So we are hoping to have you again in some of our show. If you just came now, we were listening to Mr. Michael Landrum, who studied here in the 1970s and got out of here at, at, in, in, in 1973, and now he's running for a judge, So, which is very good for us in USD. Thank you very much for listening to, to us. My name is Alex Yamek, your host. Have a wonderful day.